Good day everyone, this is John Mobley from Creative 3D. Um, thought I would go over some of the processes that I can show you basically how to take your object and be able to manipulate it later in Blender by not just putting it as a nerves object but actually creating it to a quad object. If you want to follow along, click on the link within the YouTube description to download for free. Um, so basically I have these two objects here and um, one of them, actually three objects, these two I'm not going to really do any manipulation to, so I just don't want to, I just want to export these out normally. But in this section here, I have the base, I want to, I want to be able to actually manipulate this later on, possibly in Blender, so, sorry, let me just take this again. This object is only what I want to capture, so if I do export, it should only take that object, OBJ, base, save, yes. And it only selected the base, right? So here's your NURBS object, which is nice. I mean, if you don't want to do anything to it, this is a good way to do it. But um, I personally would, um, if you're going to do anything to this or think you're going to do anything to it, it might make more sense to make it into a, um, a poly, uh, quads, basically, so you have a good workflow. And uh, that's something, if you want to level up your objects to do, that's a good way to do it. Um, Personally, I go like to 0.04 or 0.07, somewhere near. And another thing that I'll do is I'll add in this uh, max width. So when I select this, it starts creating these little squares. Um, and basically what I would do is go like to point maybe three, just to start off with to get some squares. Maybe a little bit more, 0.15 maybe. This gives you a lot more, um, you know, variations in your object. It's going to add a lot more polys, of course. Keep that in mind. But if you want to manipulate this in a different program, like Blender or something else, this is a good way to do it. Um, so once you do that, um, just make sure you select quads after that. And what it does is it takes everything and kind of quads it into a uh, four polygon sections. What that does, it gives you an option now to bring it in, manipulate it, basically. So, this say would go with this, I'm gonna say okay. And I went to 0 0.004, 0 0.15. Again, I always start with one on density just to kind of get the edges nice and clean with the bevels. And I'll say okay. So, pretty simple. And then, again, select these two top pieces uh, when you have your model. And I'll export that out as well. So, this is a quick video basically on, you know, exporting importing that kind of thing um, I'll call this the top which is some of what you already have and again I'm just going to go ahead and overwrite this and you'll see it comes out again cancel for some reason it's stuck to the bottom too um, gotta make sure it's only these two selected so you do sections if you wanted to export yeah, if you're going to manipulate it again and you want to do some more stuff like in another program, it might be better just to do the whole thing. But for myself, I'm just going to leave the top the same as it is. So we're going to save this out place. And you'll see this detail again. So I'm going to take this off, basically. And I'm also going to add this to back to end guns because, again, I'm okay with the amount of detail here. It has a nice round edge. Um, I'm not really going to manipulate this, I'm not going to bend it. You know, all those things are part of that equation. If you're going to bend something, it's better to have quads. Because that way it just uh, works better. Um, so anyway, so let's go ahead and say OK. And then I'm going to go back into Blender here. And say New General. Don't save. OK, in Blender here, so you can basically select this box and say Delete. Let's go ahead and import these objects into Blender. So let's go, this is actually version 3.6. I'm gonna go back to my folder where I put all this stuff. Just make sure you remember where you put things. And um, you can also do the date here to make it easier. So I'm just gonna select both of these. And one thing you gotta make sure is it's up on the Z axis, on the up axis. Now we should put this on the Y, because that's the way it was inside Plasticity. And it comes out right on your screen. So let's go ahead and import these two objects, and there you go. So as you'll see here, if I go in and say Edit Objects, 
you're going to have that nice polygon flow now. Um, another way to see how your object looks is, of course, to add a metal material to this. So let's just say you just want to take this one here. I'm using hard ops here, so you can go in and change it yourself, but I'm just going to do Alt M and add a blank material. And I'm going to go in here to the render mode. Um, I'll go to shading just real quickly here and just kind of light this down a little bit. Something that you can see what you're doing. I think uh, the roughness is a little bit higher. And that's pretty much it. Go back to your layout. And so now you see your object looks really clean. This is the way it actually exports. It does a really good job. Now, like I said before, you could select these up here. And now to do something different with this. Let's say Alt M, add another blank material. Alt M, blank material. Try to change that around a little bit. I think this is way too shiny, but okay, go back to shading. And we can take this roughness and bring it up. Something like that. Just to get yourself uh, understand what you're looking at. And what I also do, I always use personally cycles. It's just a much better way to go with rendering to me. Um, Okay, so now I'm going to manipulate this object here just because I want to change some things to say. For instance, this is just one example of what you can do. So I would go to Edit Object and you see your squares now, which makes a lot of sense. Um, it, you should be able to now easily manipulate this thing. Um, and what I would do in this case is I might select this base section here deselect these of course and that one and now that I've created this you know option here with the quads you could actually go in here and say I would like to inset faces a little bit on this so I'll take the inner or outer ones like that and then I could actually go in and hit this tool here which is extreme region you can bring those inward and I could also scale them so I can use the, let's go with the X, bring that in, something like that. And then I could also bring it down a little bit. So I'm going to again hit the scale key, the S key with the Y, I'm sorry, with the, um, it'll be the Z axis. I'm going to bring this in just to give it some different look to it basically. And once I do that, now I can go in and say, okay, that's all done, it looks good. And if you wanted to add in like a sub D, you can, or you can just go with what you got if it works for you. Um, personally, um, you can just go in and, you know, just manipulate this intersections without doing sub D, but um, I'll show you an example of that. So if I go in here and select this line tool, Hit the Alt key and hit this one too. Hit Shift Alt and I'll move this a little bit closer so I can see what I'm doing here. So if I go in here, let's do this again. I'm going to hit the Alt key line, Shift Alt line, and I'm going to use the um, Control B key. I'll pull this out, something like that. I can rotate it now. Again, it just gives you an option to add more detail if you want. Um, and I think this would look fine that way. This is another one, so let's go ahead and Alt key. Select the top one here, hit the Alt, like that. Shift, Alt, same thing here. Control B, and then you can make this even bigger if you wanted to, or more rounded, or less rounded, and then something like that. So now, with that said, you can go back in here now and just select this whole outer piece, Alt key right there, Control B, bring it out a little bit, and you can change the amount of faces if you wanted. 
You could probably just go with something like that. And that would look nice as well. So if you go object now, you got a nice little cut in there. That would be otherwise hard um, to go back in and redo all the polys around that. Um, so anyway, that's one option. Another thing is that it's real sharp on this end here, right? So I would go in and manipulate that as well. I go back to edit object and so again, select the alt key. And it doesn't go around, that's okay. We'll go ahead and hit shift alt. And then hit all these sections here. Just so we can get everything selected. Again, hit the control B. And you can bring it out. You can have a little bit more, a little less, whatever you like. And that's pretty much the gist of it. Um, like I said, it really gives you more options to cut in stuff. And if you did want to do like a sub D, you could physically do that. Um, personally, um, if you do that, you have to re manipulate all these things. So I personally don't want to do sub D because it adds a lot more polygons to your object. But if that's something that you want to do, it's of course an option. So let's go back to object mode. See, that looks really you know, cool, really easy to add in Blender. Um, what we can do here as well is we can actually now, you know, basically use, I, I use hard ops again, and I will actually go in here and say, I like to mirror this to this other side. And then once I've done that, good to go. So now that I've created this, I'd like to maybe add a little bit more flair to the backside just to give it some variations. Again, this is, makes it real easy once you do this. So I'm going to go ahead and exit this um, hard ops section and I'm going to go back in here now and do edit mode. And again, I'm going to do similar to this backside. If I didn't have all these polys here, it'd be really, it, we'd be cutting this in and we'd be having all kinds of issues. Um, so I just feel this is a much easier workflow if this is what you're trying to, you know, get. So let's say we do something like this. And let's say I want to add in some of these areas here. I don't really want this whole thing here. Then I can go in and actually manipulate this, like hitting the point tool and creating a knife. And then I could select this uh, magnetic tool with the actual snapping. So I can snap to this, to this, right click, right enter. Same thing here, here to here, enter. So you can get a real quick shape. Um, and then go back to your polys. And I'm gonna deselect this by right clicking on these. There we go. So again, you can really easily make something out of something. So we got this object now. And I'm going to, again, use the inset tool. I'll we'll bring this in just a smidgen. So that way it's its own thing. This is just much easier if you do this. And then I'm going to go also to um, this extrude region button. I'm going to push that through. And again, I want to make sure that's off. So control Z. This is bring it in. And what it's doing is, it's actually doing it on the other side too because you got it on mirror. Now, I might not want to go that far in, but just to give it some you know, depth, something like that. Say OK. So you can just left click on it. And I'm going to add some, basically a nice edge on this as well. So again, Alt. And move this over a little bit. Let's shift. Alt again, and do these as well. Shift, Alt, and then hold it. So I got all those selected. Okay, so let's go see what we're doing here. I'm just going to hit the Control B and pull this out, kind of like a rounded edge, something like this. I might add a little bit more to it. Something like that. Okay. Let's hold the shift. Hit the move tool here. Again, hit the shift key. Select that one. Select this one. 
And I'm going to hit the Control B. So I'm going to bring this out as well. Something like that. Same thing here. Again, I really don't want to um, do sub D. Just going to hit the Shift Shift key. This one here. And again, I'm going to pull this out. Control Z. Oops. Hit the Control B key again. Bring this out. I just think something that's tighter. Like that. Again, my objective here is just to make it look clean. Now this is the opposite side, so if I select this line, this line, and shift shift in this line and that line, we can hit the control B again and we can do the opposite side now. And that would look nice. The only thing with this is now you have a, a very sharp edge as you can see here. I don't think it looks that nice, but we can go in and adjust it. So let's go ahead and go back in here. See this right here. This is a very harsh point, and it basically cut away from the other object, um, which is not what we really wanted. So I would go back in here and select the line tool. I'm also going to select this line with the L key. Hit the control B, self off. Do something like that. It has a nice edge. And then here as well. So now I got this whole thing selected. I'm going to hit the control B again. I'm going to pull this out. Actually, make sure we got this selected again. Control B. Pull this out. So it has a nice edge to it. You don't even have to, you could do a chamfer if you want. That makes more sense. It's really your call, of course. Um, you just wanna make sure it doesn't um, impede on the other object. So I'm gonna do undo. I think I'll just do a little bit on this one. So this is gonna do control B again. We're gonna bring this out just a little bit. Something like just like that. A little chamfer. Alright, so let's go back to object mode. Like I said very easy to manipulate as once you create the object the way you want it. Anyway, I hope this helps everybody um, in understanding how to do the workflow if you want to do other manipulation with your objects after plasticity into like Blender or uh, something equivalent. Um, anyway, uh, please uh, subscribe. Let me know if you like this video. I'll continue to build these things and help others learn. Uh, thank you.